I don't know if you guys can see that very good, but I started in straight and by the time I got down to the bottom, I had to back the saw way back out and let it curve to the left because that's the only way the chainsaw would cut. The, uh, the saw, the bar gets in a bind and it wouldn't let me go past about two or three inches deep and then it wanted to curve to the left. So we're going to take a look at it and see if we can figure out what's going on or what we can get fixed on it. Okay, we got everything laid out on the bench here. And as you can see, I determined basically that I need a new saw bar. But in doing so, uh, I learned a few things from talking to people at the saw shop, from taking some measurements and what have you. And I thought I would just share that on here. Some stuff that I didn't think about, uh, some stuff that's pretty interesting. So the very first thing that I got into and a lot of what a lot of people assume when a saw starts cutting crooked is that you've got you you sharpen the saw your, or the chain yourself and you mess something up. One set of teeth is longer or sharper or what have you than the others. So um, I use a uh, Granberg jig whenever I sharp, sharpen my chainsaw chains and I think most what people do is one set of teeth it'll be easier for them to file or cut or what have you so they tend to do one side uh, one side gets shorter than the other so the rakers there don't let those shorter ones cut as much and it tends to want to cut to whatever side that's longer so I thought I'd start by going checking myself on the saw sharpening I've got a pair of cheap calipers here and this is nothing scientific but I just measured from the front to the back of the uh, of each cutter this is 340 thousandths. We've got 330, 340, 330, 335, 330. So I've got a little bit of variation there, but nothing that I thought was uh, extraordinary. Nothing that I thought would really cause any problem because I see a lot of people sharpen them with Dremels or those automatic sharpeners and to get them all within 15 or 20 thousandths that those are uh, They'd have to pay a lot more attention than what they do it seems like so I also decided to measure the the new chain and There's some variation here, too. We're looking at uh, 371 there 368 372 and this isn't like a super precise measurement, but it just kind of shows that there's a little bit of variation there too. So I found that interesting, but I kind of ruled out uh, how I was sharpening the chain. The next thing uh, that comes up a lot of places, you see a lot of YouTube videos about this, is the two uh, guide rails. So mine was, was worn a little bit, and <clears throat> that was something that I tried at first. They say if you can get one to stand up on its edge, it's not too bad. Well, at first mine wasn't great. It could it would stand up, but you could see that it would was leaning a little bit. So I filed both of these flat as best I could. I went over on my uh, my table saw table, set it up, put a square on it, and I was just very close to square. So I didn't figure that that was the problem. And I took it back out there, and again, uh, same thing, cutting crooked. The chain, the saw would start smoking and what have you, so <clears throat> that wasn't necessarily the case. Um, so going a little bit farther, I was a little bit stumped. Those are the two go-to things that you see, uh, like I said, on a lot of YouTube videos or when you talk to people. So I wanted to go a little bit farther. And finally, I decided uh, in looking for, looking at chains and bars and what have you, the gauge on this particular saw, the, the distance in this groove, the width of that groove, they call it the gauge, it's supposed to be 50 thousandths. So I knew my chain rocked back a fair amount, back and forth a fair amount. So I thought I would take a measurement here. And this bar is worn out now to 60 thousandths, depending upon which side you read on. There we're up to 65, 65 again. So this, if this bar is actually worn to a whole nother gauge size. There's a a 58 gauge and a 63 or 68 gauge, something like that. Um, so 
this bar is worn that far. So I didn't know what was acceptable wear on these, but I pretty much assumed uh, that that was too far. So when I got my new bar, just out of curiosity's sake, I took a measurement and we, I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not, probably not, but we're at exactly 50 thousandths. So I wasn't sure how accurate these would actually be, but they appear to be rather accurate. Again, this is just a measurement with dial calipers, but that's pretty close. We come up to 50 every time. So while I was there, I would pretty much figured out that that was the issue. I was gonna need a new bar. And they sell a tool that uh, will actually roll these back closed. So it's a couple ball bearings, you run it up and down and you can tighten the distance between those bearings and you can squeeze that back shut and then uh, file them back straight and you should be good to go. And I'm thinking about buying one of those and trying that out just to see if I can save this bar. Uh, this new bar was $45, so it's not, if I were to wear that on this one also, I'd like to be able to fix it and maybe get this one as a backup. Uh, so I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna see about getting one of those tools and we might do a video about seeing if we can straighten this bar out. But as I was talking to the, the lady at the saw shop, I was kind of picking her brain on stuff that they see and different things. And one question I had was whether or not uh, I, I should put this new bar on and whether or not it would be okay to run this old chain. If possibly this chain is what was wearing this bar or if there could be something wrong with this chain that would then damage my new bar. She said, basically as long as this fits in there good, then it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but I wanted to kind of look into that and see what uh, what would what goes on. So I took, this is the chain that was in the video of me cutting, and I wanted to measure these drive lengths to see what we've got. So this is supposed to be a 50 thousandths chain, and depending upon where I measure it, I get, I got one drive length there that was right at 50, that one's 48. Somewhere here, I hit on one that was about 45 thousandths. Uh, so that one's 46, 47. So these are a little bit closer than I had originally thought, but I did come across some that were fairly worn. So I was like, well, is that the, the standard size? Do they make that? Uh, 47, 48 thousandths, uh, so that uh, you get a, a nice slip fit in this new bar. So I had another chain uh, that I measured, and this one is right at exactly 50 thousandths. And then I bought a new chain for the sake of, of getting back going again. And this one is right at 49 to 50 thousandths, again, depending upon how accurate I am with these calipers. So um, just a couple things that I thought were interesting. Uh, keep an eye on your your uh, gauge thickness there and the wear on your drive th teeth on the thickness of your your drive teeth um, right now I'm gonna throw this new bar on and this new chain and go cut some firewood but uh, coming going forward in a video I'm probably gonna see if I can get that one fixed and maybe throw this little bit tighter chain and see if we can get it cutting back straight again thanks for watching like and subscribe